Watch your breath all the way in, all the way out. And then the next breath, and then the next breath. Keep this up, breath after breath. And this way you're looking after your own well-being and the well-being of others. When the mind can calm down and settle in the present moment, it's a lot less likely to be a victim of its own greed, aversion, and delusion, and other people are not going to be victimized either. So think of this as doing good all around. Today we're commemorating the passing of a John Sawat twelve years ago in the, the Thai calendar. That's one cycle of twelve years. The goodness that he did, it though, still lives on. But we have to keep it alive for it to live on. He did his goodness. He looked after his own well-being. He looked after the being of others. He practiced the, the Buddhist teachings to the best of his ability all the way to the end. And not, not only that, but he set up this monastery, set up actually several monasteries here in the States. One up in Seattle, two in Los Angeles, and what made that as the fourth. Because of his concern for the people here in America who don't have the Dharma. He wanted to bring the Dharma here. He could have stayed in Thailand and had the comfortable life of a famous Ajahn, but he said he came here and put up with the cold weather and all the foibles of Americans and Thais in America, so that we would have the Dharma. So we think in thoughts of gratitude of what he did, and then we try to put his teachings into practice. As the Buddha said on the night of his passing, that the best way to show respect and gratitude for him was would be to practice the Dharma in accordance with the Dharma. And that's a teaching that Ajahn Swat would comment again and again. We don't practice it in line with the customs of this country or that country. We practice it in, or in line with our own defilements. Because all too many people like to take the Dharma and shape it to fit their own defilements. But his, his path was a different one. of taking himself and shaping himself to fit in with the Dharma. And that's what we do as we practice generosity, as we practice virtue, as we practice the, the various stages of concentration and insight. We're trying to change ourselves, bring ourselves in line with the Dharma. We practice the Dharma as it was meant to be practiced. And that way we find we get the best benefits out of it. So this is how we show our gratitude for what Ajahn Swat did. Without him, this monastery wouldn't be here. We now have this opportunity to practice because of his original inspiration. So we want to carry on that good inspiration so that we can be an inspiration to the people who come behind us. Because this is how the Dharma lives. It lives on in the actions of people. If it's just there in the books, people can take the books and do anything they want to with them. But if they see it in the, in the thoughts and the words and the deeds of someone who really has shaped themselves to fit in line with the Dharma, it's an inspiring sight and it's an inspiring example. So this way we take care both of our own well-being and the well-being of others as we carry on this good tradition. 